Welcome back to Fusion Friday for Woodworkers. Today is the turn of the fillet command. Let's dive straight in. You're going to find the fillet command up here in the modify menu or shortcut F. Add fillets or rounds to one or more edges, faces or features. So you select the edge, the face or feature and then specify a radius. You can use the rule fillet type to add fillets based on specific rules. So before we get into the fillet command, let's just draw ourselves a little piece of wood so we can see what's going on. Going to come into sketch and I'm going to just create a sketch on any random plane. Use the rectangle tool, just drag this out, don't really care what the size is. And then I'm going to finish the sketch. Then I'm going to use the extrude tool to just make this piece of wood. And we'll pull it up to 20 millimeters or so. So now let's go up and select the fillet tool. And here's your menu. Now the fillet tool is really two tools in once. In fact, in earlier versions of Fusion, it was actually two separate tools. There's the fillet tool and then a rule fillet tool. Now they both do the same thing. The rule fillet tool is really useful when we're going to use parametric modeling and we want the fillet we want to apply to change as we change the overall dimensions or features of the model. Real fillets are quite advanced, so we're not going to cover that today. We will cover this in a future episode, but we are going to focus in on the fillet tool. Now in its simplest form, what this does, it puts a radius on the edge of your piece of wood. So you click the select command and come down and we'll select this edge here. And as you can see, it gives me an arrow and I can pull the arrow in. And now that's given me a round over on the side of the material. And that's it. That's what the fillet does in its simplest form form, it just puts a round over on the edge of your material, something that we want to do an awful lot as woodworkers. And you can see it's tracked that up here in this window. We selected one edge, we put a 12.5 millimeter radius inside it, and that was tangential. Now you can actually do two types of curve, a tangent curve or a curvature curve. And watch the bottom. See, it's a slightly different profile. So the tangent curve is going to create a curve that's tangent to the intersect point of your lines. If this line was to come out and this was to come up, where the curvature will just give you a gradual curve between the two. And you can see the different type of profile at the end here. This is your curvature. This is your tangent. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you don't want the one we've just done, we can come down and we click this cross and we can remove that selection and it goes back to normal. Now we've got a different type of radius types as well. We've got a constant radius with the one we just saw. A constant radius will give you, well, a constant radius throughout the length of your material. We have an alternative called the variable radius. And on a variable radius, you can see you're now going to get two arrows, one at the end. And here in this bottom window, a start radius and an end radius. Just play with these arrows, pull that in. So you can see I've now got an end radius of zero, but I've got a start radius of 7.5. And it gives us this variable radius length overall, which is quite useful. So if you want to just put a sloping chamfer on something, then you, you can do. And that might be something that you want to play around with in your model. I'm going to delete this one, so I'm back up to the white window and I'm going to press the remove the selection. So I'll come back into constant radius. Now so far we were just in selecting the edge, but constant radius, if I select that, I can select the edges or the face or even a feature. So I'll just select a face here and you can see that's now highlighted the face. And when I move the arrow, look at that, it's going to do all four of the edges at the same time. So you can see if you wanted to make a nice round on top of a box, for example, that's how you would do it. That's a five millimeter radius all the way around, which is really, really quite good. Just going to cancel that one off again. You can also select multiple faces. So I'll select this face and this face, but I'm also going to select this face. So I've got three faces now selected here. And when I now move the arrow, that will affect all of the edges on all of those faces. So you can now see I've got the rounds there 
and I've also got the rounds here on this edge and the rounds there on the top of that end. So that's quite useful as well if you wanted to do all of those things at once. Now there's this corner type menu here. If you've selected that sort of area where you start to see these corners as you're intersecting multiple faces, you can change that. Now you've got the rolling ball type of corner and you've also got the setback corner. A rolling ball will just roll round in line with that and almost put, I guess, a, a segment of a ball there. But look at the face, the face here is square. If you choose a setback, watch the face. You can see now it's continued that curve down here. In fact, it's continued that curve on all of these edges and that's the different corner types that you have, setback or rolling ball. Got to cancel that down as well. So that's pretty much what the fillet tool does for you. It allows you to create these fillets on the edges of your board. The other thing you can do, you can select multiple edges. So let's have that edge. And now you can see it's put up the parameters here. And I'm going to make this edge here oh, five millimeters. So that's a nice five millimeter curve there. And now I'm going to add a new selection. And I'm going to select this edge. Now that edge has vanished, but the rule's still there. So don't worry, it will come back. This edge, I want to do a variable radius, and I'm going to have that end there and that end there. So now you can see it's put two selections up here, one that's just a standard 5mm radius and one that's a variable radius. And you can see that's now put that into the material. So you can, if you wanted to, start to create reasonably complicated shapes with a fillet tool, and it's all about putting that edge on your stock. Cancel those two down. Now the only one we've not looked at is this chord length. And a chord is a straight line that intersects two points of a circle. So let's create a cylinder and then look at what chord length does for us. So I'm going to cancel out of the fillet tool. Just create a sketch. And we'll just create a sketch anywhere really here, I guess. And I'm just going to put in a circle like so, and let's make it 20 millimeters for the laugh. And we're going to extrude that circle up. And we'll extrude that circle up by 35 millimeters. Okay, so now we've got a cylinder here. I'm gonna put a cord on this cylinder, so we'll come in and we'll sketch on this top circle. And we'll put a straight line from that point on the circle to that point on a circle. So I've now got a chord inside that circle, a straight line that intersects two points of the circle. Finish that sketch. And now we'll extrude up that part of the circle, like so, and this could be a 20 millimeter dog, for example. Okay, so now you see we've got this chord here that of course is this extrusion on the cylinder. Let's come back into the fillet tool and the first thing I want to show you is just a standard constant radius. And if I click on this line here and I start to bring it in, let's zoom right in. As I bring in the constant radius, it starts to get impacted and affected by that circle it's cutting into. And when I get to the final area, you can see that? I've got this almost quaver type shape. And what's happened there is the radius we're putting on is bent in line with this arc here of, of the circle. And that's what a constant radius would look like. Now, if I now change this, if I just delete that one and change it to a chord length, this would not follow this back radius here as we put on the profile. It will just stay to this chord length. Let me show you. Click on here. And now I'm going to bring that in. That's just going to come straight back and it's not going to bend. You can see it's just giving that rather nice curve on this. It's not distorted as I've followed this curve here. So that's what the cord length does. It allows you to put a fillet on the cord, which is a straight line that joins two parts of a circle. May be useful to you, may not be useful to you, but that's what that does. So let's cancel this out. Now the other thing that this can do, it can start to put curves between two faces, providing those faces are part of the same object. Let me show you. Sketch, top of this, I'm now going to put another rectangle at the very end of this block, just here, like so. And I'll finish the sketch, and I'm going to extrude that up. 
Now I'm going to join it together so this is now one object. And I've now got this angle down here and what I want to do is to actually put a curve on this between these two faces. So I'll come back into the fillet, a constant radius, and I want to select that edge there. And you can see the arrow is now pushing up and as I pull that out you can see it puts that nice curve on there for me like so. So that's really quite useful as well if you want to do that profile. Now that will only work if it's a single object. If I just put another cube on this end here, um, from there to there, finish that sketch and extrude this one up, but at this time I'm going to make it a new body or a new uh, component. So it's not part of that block, you can see now it's a separate cube. And if I come in with the fillet tool here at the end and select that same line, when I push that up, you can see it's just adding the fillet on the underside of that face there. It's not going to put the curve that we had here because it treats those quite rightly as two separate bodies or two separate components. Make sense? Perfect. Now that could come in quite handy for you, but where that really comes in handy with this curve is when we're doing things like mortises. And we know we're going to route the mortise out, and we know that routed mortises have curved corners. So we'll come in and we'll just draw another sketch here. And this time we'll create a simple mortise on the this piece of stock. And let's just go from there to there, like so. And we'll just constrain that okay and we'll finish the sketch and we'll just extrude this down now to make a simple mortise and we'll just come down by oh, 10 millimeters or so okay so i've now got a simple mortise now we know that when we route this this is going to have curved edges from the router and you might want to model that so back to the fillet tool and i'm going to select that corner there and just pull it out and now I can put a radius on there, and let's call it 2.5 millimeters. Now you can start to see that would represent the type of mortise we would have if we were going to route it out. And we can do multiple things at the same time. So we'll come back into the fillet tool and I'm going to select that edge, that edge, and that edge. And now you can see I've got three edges selected here. I'm going to pull that out to that 2.5 millimeters and that's done all of the edges or all the corners I should say at the same time. So that's it, that's pretty much what the fillet tool does. Really simple, really super easy to use. It's gonna put the profile on the edges of your stock and it's going to allow you to round those corners inside those mortises and it's going to allow you to use those cores if you're messing around with cylinders. Hope you find this useful, see you soon.